Hello, my name is Ted Lederer, and you're watching another episode of It's All About Art. And today we're in conversation with painter Andrew Tong at his studio in downtown Vancouver. Andrew, thank you for inviting oh, us over. You're welcome, Ted. Now, I see these most remarkable paintings that are all around us, and they're for an upcoming exhibition April 7th to 25th, and it's called So It Goes. I can't get the song out of my head, but <laughs> where does the title So It Goes? Uh, from? It comes from the Kurt Vonnegut book, Slaughterhouse Five. Right. It was the uh, main character, Billy Pilgrim, he was a uh, witness to the bombing of Dresden, and uh, all these atrocities during his life, and in the end, it was just a nonchalant way that he looked at everything. Everything happens, like stuff happens all the time. You can't do anything about it, so he's lying for everything. All the disasters in his life was de oh, so it goes. There's a, a theme to your work that around the so it goes and around all this that happens. So tell me a little bit about the works that we see around us. A lot of them have children, not all of them, but a lot of them have children, and they're in very disturbing circumstances. Yeah, yeah, ho hopefully they're not, not too disturbing. There is a bit of humor uh, about them, but... Yeah, I guess it's from when I was a kid. I remember really enjoying being a, a child up to a certain point when sort of the, the world dawned on me and, you know, I saw it for what it was. And being a parent myself had a lot to do with this because I've got a, a one-year-old and, yes. you know, I will be shielding him from everything. But, you know, I can't always be like that because I went through a lot. You know, you have to see it. But um, what I think the core of it is, it's the, uh, the selfishness of humankind. Get what you need at any cost where it evolves into total warfare or, and that they are very destructive paths that we seem to follow. We all can do our, our part. I mean, in parenting, I can, you know, guide my son to a, a better life, better than my dad gave me and his dad gave him. The show piece, or the title piece of the show, is a, a work called Billy Goes to War. Yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that piece, because I think it, it may encapsulate what you're trying to say about your work. The core of that comes from my, uh, probably my granddad. There was a story that he... Uh, told us um, it was the, the big push in the, in the First World War and he was uh, just turned 16 years old and he went to the recruiting office, he ran off from home and decided to join the army and do his bit right. because the propaganda told him that's what he should be doing and right. um, he went to the recruiting office and they asked him how old he was and he said well I'm 16, just turned 16 and he, they asked him how old are you? I, I'm 16. Well I'm going to ask you once more how old you are and he said 18, right, and he said, go in that line over there and you're in. It's the same as it is now with the army, and they tend to prey on the poor and the people haven't got too much. I mean, it's a way out, it's a job, sure. it's a college education, it's all these promises. Sure. And it's, a, you know, it's the same then, and it's probably always has been throughout history. Sure. So, basically, I see these guys as still children. They're 17, 18 years old still. Right. And they're driving tanks around, listening to heavy metal music. and. Right. Killing things. Blowing things up. Right. It's a video uh, game. Well, one of the qualities of your work that I particularly appreciate is that obviously there's this naivety to some of it, but underneath you can see this incredible skill and discipline. I mean, you are a highly skilled and trained painter. I think it goes back to uh, your time in, in, in England and in South London. Now, that's a pretty tough area of London, is it not? Uh, Croydon wasn't the, the nicest place to grow up in the world. It's pretty uh, grey and dismal and a pretty violent yeah. uh, environment to grow up in. It was an area in, in Croydon called uh, Banghole. That's where my, uh, my granddad lived and uh, where he brought the family up. And it was a, a place where they put everyone that didn't fit in with all the other areas. And yes. People who couldn't pay their rents for their homes or the, the housing there, so they, they tried to take them out of society and put them in this like, little square mile of right. uh, Croydon that um, they wouldn't disturb anyone else, and it was a very colourful place. That was <laughs> but, you know, my, my grandmother was a bookies runner, she did, um, <laughs> she was taking illegal bets and running up and down the street for the betting agencies, and my, my dad was a in a little street gang that are around the area, so they were always fighting with the streets next door and, and that. So, you know, I grew up with these people that were less than, well, not to say less than honest, but they, they had hard backgrounds. They were involved in a lot of uh, stuff. Right. I sort of was involved with it, not to the extent as the rest of them, but you know, I was on the peripherals. And right. Now, when you moved out, where did you move to? I, I moved out of uh, that area of Croydon and moved into an area called uh, Penge, Crystal Palace 
which was just as violent. There was hundreds of kids in the area and we all basically beat each other up for most of our <laughs> <laughs> I understand so far from the conversation that you went from what were pretty hard scrabble beginnings and somewhere along the way you made a shift. Tell us about how that shift happened because obviously you're not the man today that you were back then. <laughs> Hopefully not. Um, well, when I was growing up I was, I, I was a bit of a tear away. My mum was especially worried. She spent many a night laying awake worrying about what I was going to do and I, I had this knack of being able to draw well which my, actually runs in my family. Yes. So my, my dad, of all, all the, the harshness that he had with me and you know, he it, it wasn't a, a good relationship we had most of the time, he always encouraged me to draw and paint and he did his utmost which I never really knew about what he, he did, you know he talked to the, peop the teachers at school and Without you knowing about it? Oh yeah, no, he used to go to parent-teacher meetings and they used to just discuss what my artwork and right. I mean, my teacher you could see in that sort of those early drawings that I could go quite a long way and she got in touch with the head of department at the uh, graphic design and illustration uh, school in Reigate. He has a look at my work and says, you're in, basically. Just like that? Yeah, no, he said, don't worry about doing the first two years of the course, you don't have to, so. <laughs> So what was that like for you? I was the youngest one in the class. Really? But no, but it was good. I mean, it was very disciplined, very hard work, and the teachers we had were top-notch. They were the top of their field. So tell me a little bit about, you have a child, tell me a little bit about that and what that does for your painting. Oh, that's changed it completely. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I don't know if I really fooled as much as about the world. I mean, I've always wandered my way through it, and it probably that selfishness again, and did what I wanted to, and when right. I wanted to, and it was all me, but I can't be like that anymore. You know, I'm... I'm <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Andrew, it's interesting to hear how having a, a, a child has informed your paintings. And again, I mean, even this piece, if you turn around, even this piece right here, you know, I mean, this, this child with a toy gun and you just see what's coming down the road. Yeah, it's just, you know, we're, we're all sort of brainwashed by the news and the me media, you know, we, we're at war with and why we hate them and, you know, it's, and it's done from the other side and all. I mean, it, it, it's a silly way of carrying on and he's seen this and he's playing a kid's game, you know. He's, he's uh, put the ted teddy bear on trial and he's, he's been executed. He's an enemy of the state, which is the name of the piece. Hmm. And the badge is a reference to uh, I am free. But he's not, you know, he's still being watched and pushed into stuff. He's still being manipulated by the state, but in his head he's been told that he's a, we're in this de democratic society and you are free, you know, and this is the bad guy. There's no room for him. Well, Andrew, the pieces are extremely powerful. Uh, and the show is going to just uh, knock you over when you walk in and see it. Is there anything else, either about the exhibition or the work or about you, that you'd like to share with the viewers? Yeah, I hope you don't think it's all too gloomy. We're not all totally doomed. and This is just what I see around me today. It doesn't mean it's going to go that way. And, a, and a, there is a sense that there's a possibility of redemption. Yeah, I mean, well, there is hope for us, I think. I mean, I wouldn't have children if I didn't think, you know, the end can be good. You know, we carry on the way we are. I think, I think we need, we're getting a wake-up call at the moment to change our ways, and I think we, we will. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the invitation you. to your studio. This has been very enlightening. And good luck with the exhibition. Thank you, Ted. Cheers. My name is Ted Letter, and you've been watching another episode of It's All About Art and we've been in conversation with painter Andrew Tong and we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye for now. Bye.